Hey YouTube, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be talking about slavery in the Bible. You know, God did actually regulate slavery in the Bible. So, but the fact that God regulated it, does that mean that he actually condones it? Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to ask you to please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. The word slave or doulas, has two different meanings. The slave, the, the, what we think of when we think of a slave, but it also has the meaning of servant. So the, the, the word doulos, Strong's word number 1401, is interchangeable with slave and servant. So for this reason, most slavery in the Bible was very different than the slavery that was practiced in America during the 18th and 19th centuries. Most were domestic slaves with a high degree of independence and functioned as live-in employees. People would become slaves for many different reasons, to escape poverty or destitution, and others would be slaves to make restitution for a debt that they, had, uh, that, that they were in. Slavery during this time was a lot different, again, than the slavery during the 18th and 19th centuries in the southern United States, because according to Exodus, Chapter 21, verse 16, anyone who kidnaps another person is to be put to death. Masters were to treat their slaves with the utmost respect, and slaves during biblical times could usually own property and had equal rights. But it's also important to look at the seven different types of slavery that the, uh, that the Bible talks about, because not all slavery is equal. In biblical terms so there were different types of slavery uh, one was for people that were captured in war as described in Genesis chapter 14 verses 21 the second type of slavery were people who were sold into slavery as described in Genesis chapter 17 verse 12 the third type of slavery were people who were born into slavery as described in Genesis chapter 15 verse 13 uh, some people became slaves, the fourth reason, to pay restitution for a crime. During, you know, there were no jails back in the time of Exodus. Uh, Exodus chapter 22, verse 3 describes this kind of slavery for somebody paying restitution for a crime. The fifth type of slavery is people who were paying restitution for a debt or debtor's prison, as described in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. The sixth type of slavery described in the Bible were people who actually sold themselves into slavery to escape poverty or destitution, kind of like an employee-employer relationship. Uh, you can read about this type of slavery in Leviticus chapter 25, verses 39 through 43. And the seventh type of slavery that the Bible talks about is the bad stuff, uh, kidnapping. Exodus chapter 21, verse 13. Uh, described there and this type of slavery again is not permitted because according to exodus chapter 21 verse 16 anyone who kidnaps another person according to the law of god in the old testament was to be put to death but you know the question becomes because uh, a lot of people will still will say well god condones slavery because it's in the bible so we have to ask ourselves as we wrestle with this because god regulated slavery in the old testament does this mean that God approves of slavery? Just as some today would say, yes, that means God condones of slavery, the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 19 also wrongly assume that God regulating something equals his approval when they ask Jesus the question, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason at all? And Jesus answered them and he said, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Then the, they said to him, they said to Jesus, Why then did Moses command to give her a certificate of divorce and send her away? Jesus said to back to them, Because of your hardness of heart, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it has not been this way. So notice what happened. The Pharisees came to Jesus with a legal question. 
about which regulations ought to govern divorce. And Jesus responded in a way that they weren't expecting at all, saying that there shouldn't be any divorce. The Pharisees were confused by this. How could it be that there shouldn't be any divorce if God regulated it? Doesn't that mean that God thinks it's fine as long as it's done right? Jesus makes it clear that that line of thinking is not true. The Pharisees missed something extremely important about God's law. There's a difference between what's legal and what's moral. Between the practical need to deal with reality of life on planet Earth and the existence of an idea. The law, God's law, was not meant to be a list of every single thing moral and immoral. Rather, God's law functioned as every national set of laws functions, as reasonably enforceable rules to govern a society. And the Pharisees had made the mistake of focusing on just staying within the regulations instead of going beyond them to seek the goodness of God's heart and perfect plan. Just as with this example of divorce that we just looked at, the same was true for slavery. The rules regulating slavery were added because of the hardness of humans' hearts. It's created a situation where slavery existed in certain functions in their societies, but it was not that way from the beginning. In the beginning, there was human dignity an equal value resulting from the fact that every single individual, whether they're old or young, poor, rich, royal, or just a common person, is made in the image of God. But after the fall, the ideal society all got thrown out the window and God had to deal with what was actually there. So the reason why God uh, regulated slavery was because of the hardness of people's hearts. Because humanity had created a situation where slavery existed. and it served certain functions in their societies, but it's not what God's perfect plan was. Deeply ingrained cultural patterns do not change overnight, but they have to be redeemed over time. Slavery, slavery was woven into the culture of that day. So just as with divorce, neither slavery nor divorce were the situation that God desired at all. God made rules, though, to keep the evil of the practice to a minimum. For example, again, if you kidnapped someone and made him or her a slave, you were to be put to death, as the Bible says in Exodus. And if a slave escaped from his master for whatever reason, you were not allowed to, re to return them. Slavery in Western countries would have never even gotten off the ground if this rule about not stealing somebody would have been followed. So God regulated divorce, and yet he explicitly says he hates it. Let me say that again. God regulated divorce, but God also specifically stated that he hates it. So the regulation of the practice of divorce did not mean that he condoned it. Therefore, one cannot assume that God's regulation of slavery means that God condones slavery. The existence of slavery taught God's people both the condition of our own hearts and a crucial truth about our great God. This is why it was Christians in the 18th and 19th century who not only worked to see that others were freed from spiritual slavery, but who also led the way in following God's desire to free others from physical slavery. Could God have prevented slavery from ever existing? Absolutely, you bet he could. He could have, just as he could have prevented all other episodes of suffering, yet he didn't. But just as Joseph said of his own sufferings as a slave, because you have to remember that it's not just one people group that were slaves one time. One time, God's people, Israel, were slaves in Egypt themselves. So just as Joseph said of his own sufferings as a slave, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Slavery did not pass through this world without accomplishing a purpose even greater than the suffering that we're not going to fully understand until this age is over and we're with God in eternity. But we always have to remember that slavery still exists today in many forms and needs to be exposed and fought against. Slavery is still alive, unfortunately, and it's alive and well 
in the sex trade, and in human trafficking. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and I hope to see you in the next video.